Hey, 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 it's Dr. Letitia Wright, host of the Right Place television show, America's Crowdfunding Strategist. And uh, yeah, today's, here's my live, my lives, my live, my live, my live. Okay, y'all. Hey, Jeff. Listen, I just put up a post about, what did I put up the post about? Um, actually, I've done a bunch of content today already hey how are you how you doing jeff um let me see what's the latest post so i can tell you about those so you can make sure you watch them uh someone asked me do i help do i do crowdfunding for africa i'm not sure if they were talking about like charity or for people in africa or do I work with other countries? I definitely work with other countries. I teach crowdfunding, business crowdfunding. I teach it at an international business school. So I did a whole post on that. So it's a couple of minutes long. Um, what are you using for your hair? I love it. Oh, right now I'm into... Um, goodness, you know what? I'll make a post of it. I, I just got a, a bunch of new products that I'm trying out. So... I will make you a post. What, let's see. What is your name on there? Ren Ra Ra Ban. Let me make sure I'm following you. Otherwise, um, Ma Moni Ra Ra Ban 3. I will make you a, a video on that because I just got a bunch of new products and I could just show you exactly what I'm doing. The other thing is that um, the 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 pandemic kind of cut me off from going to a hairdresser, so my hair got really wild and better. And I also started using um, Olaplex for shampoo, conditioner, and I use Olaplex 3. And what I use it for is I kind of use it between shampoos to put on my hair to help stop breakage. Olaplex has made a difference. It's, I've been able to get a little bit more length on there. So it's expensive. That. But, um, you know, I kind of try to make it last. The Olaplex shampoo conditioner is okay, but that Olaplex 3, um... I think has really kind of made a difference, especially putting a little bit on. But I'll show you the other stuff. I'll make you a video. I'll tag you in it. So I'll put it up a little bit later. Thank you so much for the, uh, the uh, <laughs> compliment. Okay. I'm a bit of a product junkie. I love trying new stuff to see what happens. And sometimes you get that mix and it's like awesome. And then sometimes after a while my hair like, even with the same mix, won't do what it was doing before. So it's like, okay, this is working right now. And right now I'm in California and we're having very high humidity. This week, the humidity has been 70, 80, and 90%. At about 9 o'clock this morning, the humidity in Southern California was 97%. It's ridiculous. It's not a cloud in the sky. We have no rain. So it could also be a little bit of, you know, my air, my hair is able to suck some, some um, you know, moisture from the air. Uh, so thank you so much. I don't usually talk about that. <laughs> do you do paperwork to open, to open an LLC? So yeah, you don't have to do paperwork anymore. Um, right now, you know, you can go online with your states, right? You can go online with your state. And you can just file your LLC. This is my, my new lipstick. I felt like I wanted to buy lipsticks, but not buy the expensive lipstick. So I went to like Walmart. I bought three lipsticks and two uh, lip pin, you know, lip liner pins and spent 50 bucks. Whereas that would be like a lipstick and a lip liner normally for me. So I'm trying out. This is this color is supposed to be kind of mauve, but it's looks very very brown on me. I can't remember what color it is. Um. Anyway, I'll I'll share that with you later too. So I'm trying some new lipstick, but I felt like I'm gonna spend some money. Okay, so back to you. Paperwork for your LLC. So what you do is you go to your state.gov. So if you're in California, you go to California.gov. 
and you can put in the search bar where to apply for your LLC. And so you fill out the paper, paperwork online. You're going to fill it out online and you're going to pay online. Right now, California has a waiver and that $75 fee or 70 fee, they are not making you pay that. And you can fill out the paperwork and you can have an LLC. And then you go online to irs.gov for free. Don't pay anybody for an EIN number and get an EIN number to go with your LLC. So that's all it takes. But there are other states where an LLC is 25 bucks. The big thing with California is that the tax on an LLC is $800 a year. That's what gets you. That's what gets you in California. So, great question. You're welcome. Anybody else have other questions? Q&A for your business? This is not stop, Stump the Monkey. Please ask me questions that you're dealing with right now. That I can answer and I can help you with right now. <laughs> Woo! If you have a nonprofit. Uh, are you able to apply for grants? You can apply for grants even if you don't have a nonprofit kitty. Um, that doesn't that doesn't like qualify you for grants being a nonprofit because there are grants for for profit businesses. Every grant will have its own requirement, and so you have to read the requirements on the grant, and um, then see if does it look like your business will qualify for it and then apply for it. I used to put out a lot of videos about grants and people would constantly say, well, is it for this? Is it for that? Is it for this? And it's like, you're, they were so lazy, they wouldn't even go click the button and read the grant for themselves. So that kind of person, you're never going to get a grant. You got to do a lot of work for a grant. Thank you for following me, Kitty. I'll follow you back so that way when you talk to me, I will see it. Um, where do you apply for grants? Great question. So there's a lot of different places. There's not like there's this one place. So what you have to do is you have to look for grants. The state gives out grants. The um, city can give out grants. The county can give out grants. What you need to do is you need to look for grants. You need to be looking for them every day. The grant girlies give out, they sell you lists of places to apply for grants. You can look for free or you can pay for lists, but the bottom line is it is a constant, constant uh, work on your time. It's giving you like, <laughs> you like dogs. Yes, Fred, my dog, I have two dogs. I used to have three. I actually, my older dog, unfortunately, about a month ago, we had to, put her down. She was 18. She had arthritis really bad. And, you know, she used to wag her tail when she came to me. And then one day I noticed she stopped. And I, I just thought it was just too hard and too cruel. So we made an appointment for her and we had her put down. So now we're down to two dogs. And yes, they like to let everybody in, in the neighborhood know not to walk on this side of the street. Don't walk on that side of the street. Don't breathe their air. Don't breathe their air on their street. They think it's their job. But yes, I do like dogs. I like pretty much all animals. I was a kid who got to have a lot of different animals when I was young. Uh, the reason why I don't have a cat, I like cats. I don't have a cat because I just, I'll be honest, I don't feel like dealing with a cat box. And I have a lot of leather furniture and I would be very unhappy if the cat scratched it up. So I'm not dealing with cats right now. Um... And I have fish. Uh, they're not pet pets. Uh, they're just fish. Um, my favorite fish uh, passed. Darius passed. He was a good fish. Um, he was getting old and sick too. I have pets for a long time. And Darius was probably a six-year-old fish. And so I thought he was dead and went to scoop him out, you know, of the thing and he starts swimming around the tank really really fast like I'm not dead I'm not dead yet leave me alone I'm not dead yet I was like okay Darius do you you know so he lasted about another six months after that <laughs> but yes you will hear my dogs a lot um their dog run is downstairs right outside my window but they um 
they're, they're running around the entire yard right now. So they're, they're not confined to that area. And then if I try to do something around five, six, seven, now that's getting lighter later, I call it bark hour. I don't know what it is, but it's every dog on the street is barking at the same time. It's running about six, six thirty now. Um, it, when the winter, it runs a little earlier because it gets dark by five thirty, and that's when bark hour really starts five thirty. Now it's running about six thirty. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what what that is, but it's literally every dark dog on the block. So you will hear that. Hey, Vision Mate. I think I tried to call you about, what did I try to call you about? I felt like I had something so important to say. Anyway, I'll call you after this, Vision Mate. Um, healthy and wealthy. Yes, you have been busy. I know, you got a lot going on. What is the purpose of grant writing classes? Well, the, cl the grant writing classes is for those of you who either want to become grant writers or you want to be prolific at writing your own grants. A lot of business grants don't need a grant writer. So if you're in business and you don't have a nonprofit, I don't see a point in you taking a grant writing class. That's a waste of time. It might help you understand better, but the one thing about owning a business is that you don't want to create a job for yourself. You want to hire somebody who does that and let them do that for you. How, owning a business is not about you doing everything. If you got to do everything, all you did is make yourself another job. And so you got to be really careful about, I'm going to learn how to do everything so I can do everything myself. That is not the point. Even in a one person business, there are people who have just themselves and they make millions of dollars a year, but it's because a lot of what they do is outsourced. You have to, the only thing you can't outsource is stuff like this. You can't, out, I can't outsource me. You're not going to accept that. And the and the thing is, you you can't also yourself being a CEO. You have to be the CEO of the company. So while you're being CEO, where you can make your company make the most money, why would you be down here trying to learn how to write grants? You're taken away from the CEO. Outsource is queen, absolutely. So, you know, grant writing classes are great. But if you're in business and you're looking for grants, that should not be your focus. You pay somebody. If you don't know how to write grants, you don't know how to fill out an application, pay somebody to do it for you. You can find somebody who can do it. Any other questions? Any other questions? Thank you. Definitely dropping gems. You're welcome, Kitty. Welcome. I'll be getting a newsletter together for you guys pretty soon about funding and crowdfunding and how, how all that works. It should be ready in um, actually very shortly. <coughs> I have too much salt in here. Yep. I'm going to try to get it together today. Uh, my family flies in tonight, so the house will be full. I have an event to be at tomorrow. So this weekend's going to be very busy. I don't see myself getting very much work done uh, this weekend. Oh, I know what it was, Vision Made. I was going to ask you if you had come up with any ideas about our situation with our friend. I think that's what I was calling you about. Is there a site that you can recommend going to find someone to get the grants for my nonprofit? No, I mean, you can ask for grant writers or grant writers on here and get to know people. Ask them to show you what they've done in the past and um, get your feel of it. You do have to pay them up front. So for those of you that are looking for grant writers and thinking that they're going to write a grant and get paid when you get your money, it doesn't work like that. So, um, so your answer is no, Vision Made? Okay. 
I'm still trying to think over that whole situation, but um so so you know talk to people try people out don't rush get to know people and network and um see who you can find take your time i mean you can find people who will recommend other people but the really good grant writers are so busy they really really are Anybody else got questions about their business? Oh, also, did you, Vision Made, did you get your link out so people could buy the um, paperback version of your magazine? Is that link ready to share? I don't think I ever get that link, so please make sure I get that link. Okay, great. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. One of my clients is about to get on the cover of a magazine with a with a uh, photo that we took. So the photo that my team did. And um, I'm so proud of that. I can't wait till that magazine comes out. And um, the photographer is excellent. He, I, we, It'd been a long time since we did a photo shoot. And I kind of forgot how good he was. And I started looking at this stuff. And I was like, oh, my God. We got to do more of this. Where can I find an address for an LLC? So what you can do is you can look for a virtual office. They're called virtual offices. Just Google them. You don't want to use a P.O. box and you don't want to use UPS because uh, really when it comes to banks and everybody, credit card people, they look at that as very, very transient and that does not help you get a business credit card or get your business credit going. It looks very, very transient. Yeah, yeah, it'll be great. You'll love it, you'll love it. It's a gorgeous picture. It's a, it's the male client. Uh, you saw how beautiful the black and white of the female client came out. So it's a really gorgeous picture of him and a shirt that he loves. And so he's just standing in himself looking great. It's really good. It's really, really good. <laughs> Oh, I know what I wanted to ask. So I was thinking about your event vision, May. You want to come up? You want to come up? I don't know if you're like, I'm going to invite you. Let's see if I can figure out how to invite you. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I don't know how to invite people. That's my problem. Hey, just me. So anyway, see if you want to come up. Anyway, on Vision Made's event, um, do I have a table? Did you tell me I have a table? I don't know. I was just thinking about your event, and I was daydreaming about stuff I wanted to do because, you know, I always got to, like, be doing the most. So... <laughs> So I was, I was planning some stuff, and then I was like, well, "I'm gonna ask her like how the tables go and how everything's go." So do I, do I have like my my own table, or where am I sitting, or how is the seating going? If I have my own table, then my plan will work. But if I'm doing something, that I I don't want to wreck what you're doing because I'm trying to do the most. But just so y'all know, if you ever invite me to speak, I'm always trying to do the most. <laughs> Okay, I have my own table. Okay, great. Okay, then I'm gonna then I'm gonna go ahead with my plans. Cause you gotta, you guys gotta remember, it's an event. I'm not the only speaker. There's a lot of speakers, so you know I gotta do the most so that I stand out. So they, them, those women in that room will never forget that they met Dr. Wright. That's how I do it. I make sure that you never forget I was there. You might forget somebody else was there. You might forget somebody else was there. That's how I met Pam, Vision May. Vision May and I were speaking at an event. There's probably only one other person that was speaking at that event that I can even remember who they are. But she was so outstanding. I was like, why is she even speaking here? Like, how did this 
how did this person get her? <laughs> she was so stand out. So, you know, that's how you got to do. And it's a bunch of speakers. Baby, you better, you better be that, all that. You can't be just strolling up there, another little speaker. Hi. Is anybody going to sing, Pam? Is anybody going to start singing? <laughs> uh, I am a magnet for people who can't sing, singing at an event I'm at. It'll be like, and so-and-so wants to sing. <laughs> she said, girl, no. <laughs> I could be at a birthday party and somebody be like, and so-and-so wants to sing. And they can't sing. And it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, we got to laugh yoga. We got to laugh yoga. Uh, that, that's good enough. But, yeah. I just, just want to check, just want to check so I could get my continents together because I never know where to look when the person is not singing good because it ain't like church where everybody's looking straight ahead. It's like everybody's looking everywhere. So it's like, you got to make sure you... <laughs> know what, they, what I mean. You know you've been somewhere and somebody has insisted that they want to sing and you'd be like, please don't, but they go ahead anyway. You know what I'm talking about. They want to honor Big Mama and you're like, please don't. <laughs> but they just got to do it. They just got to do it. You'd be like, you know, Anyway, so anyway, I got to make an airport run, bring all them people in, and it's going to be, you know, four days of house full of people, and hey, Kay. I'm coming, Kay says she's coming. It'll be so many people here, I might not notice that you're here. <laughs> uh, for a while, for a couple of years, I had uh, some nieces and nephews that were going to college like around me. So east of me, there were a couple of kids going to college there. And then just west of me, a couple of kids would go to college there. So they would bounce to my house for a couple of days and then go home. One Christmas holiday, I thought it was a pile of clothes on a chair. I thought, okay, well, let me go down, pop those in the washer and, you know, keep it pushing. And then the, I almost got to it and the clothes started moving. And then I realized, oh, it's somebody is sleeping. <laughs> it, it was legs, feet everywhere, you know. Got six foot boys whose feet or legs are hanging over the couch and hanging over the love seat and hanging over this and hanging over that. And then whoever this person was, underneath all these I don't know what they were doing but you know I know it was one of my nieces and nephews so <laughs> Bishop said let me catch a flight <laughs> so yeah so we getting ready to have one of one of those weekends so I just make sure snacks and just keep the towels washing so everybody can bathe because my family is definitely into the soap and water. Even the teenage kids, the little kids, they are into the soap and water. So, um, and they don't, she said, have fun. <laughs> they do not like, uh, you know, they, they, they like the clean bath and the clean this and that. So I got to do all that. Make sure I got enough towels for all the people and... And then I bought these for my daughter, me and my daughter, so we could have matching cups of coffee or whatever we're doing. Actually, she started telling me about this recipe for rum chata in her, <laughs> in her coffee. <laughs> She's like, maybe we can do that, Mom. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I like rum chata. Okay, we'll, we will see. So we'll see how this weekend goes. 
<laughs> oh, Linda said it's delicious. Okay, well, you know what you know what the thing is. So that's that's our plan. So this is how big of a cup I bought so we can enjoy them. <laughs> Thank you for following me, Linda. I'll follow you back so I can tell you how it was. But anyway, that, that's what's going on this weekend. I actually have a red carpet Saturday. So I'm going to try to post some pictures from there. Um, I'm really bad about having my phone, but I do have a camera. So I do need to... I got a camera for Christmas. And so I want to bring that. Um, but I do need to upload uh, what I have for my last event. So... Yeah, it's really simple to use. I can use it for video too. It's not on. Probably needs to be charged. So anyway, I need to uh, hook this up to the computer so I can uh, upload the pictures from the last event. It was probably like a month ago. Uh, do you think? Uh, iPostal is a good website for virtual business address. No, what I do with a virtual business address is I actually get a physical address. There are offices that will rent to you a virtual address. What it means is that you can get their mail there and you can use them to answer your phone. You can have your phone number to go there, but, but you don't go into an office like this every day. Now, if you need to meet somebody, you can, you can call them and say, let me use an office for an hour because I need to meet so-and-so. And they have offices that you can use for a very short period of time. So you want an actual physical address. Uh, where did you get the cup? Uh, Walmart. It's not even a Starbucks cup. It's just a Walmart cup. I don't know how good it is about keeping stuff cold because I just got it. So we'll see. But it has a good hard straw. I like, I really like glass straws, but the straw was, you know, came with it. Uh, for myself, I drink out of glass straws and I like drinking out of glass. I don't enjoy plastic that much, but just to be kind of samey with my kid, that's what he did. Okay, what website can you recommend? So what it is, is they're called virtual offices. So you're going to Google virtual offices in your town and you'll find uh, there's a, there's a, uh, regal not regal hold on you can google virtual office space and um uh, da vinci virtual spaces they have space for you as little as 49 dollars a month um and then there'll be some places that have come up the one's called office evolution in ontario um Regis, R-E-G-U-S, they're across the nation. In Los Angeles, there's a Black-owned co-working space. You can use a co-working space as your office. That can be really great. And then uh, Founder Space co-working right here in Rancho Cucamonga, uh, you can that can be your office, and you can have your mail and stuff go there and have a place to meet and a place to work. So Founder has been around for the last couple of years. Um, I went there when it was really, really early. Founders is in Rancho Cucamonga and you can get a day pass for $30. So say I really need to get some work done. It's Monday. Everybody's here. The house is full for 30 bucks. I can go over to Rancho Cucamonga, go there and work, work. They have a podcast room that's $35 an hour. They have a virtual mailbox is $50 a month. If you want to have a seat, it's $200 a month. If you want a desk, it's $400 a month. And if you want an office, it's $800 a month. So Founder, is they have some nice guys. They used to have a lot of beer on tap there. Uh, but it's right here in my community and easy to find. And there's uh, also, I guess there's a Founders in Pasadena. Uh, they made one in Pasadena. That's my hometown where I grew up. And they have a Friday coffee meetup. So it brings together people in Pasadena where they get together. Um, there was a coffee event and, you know, it, it's all of that. So it can be, um, it can be really great. You can find places that can help you. But yeah, for 30 bucks a day pass, they have a phone booth where you can make phones. I mean, make phones, make phone calls. Yeah, I'm in here making a phone. 
<laughs> they have a booth where you can make a phone call and you can talk on the phone in the booth and nobody will know your business. So just, that's what it is. All right. But get that kind of space because that doesn't look so temporary. When they see you with a P.O. box, they're like, oh, you can be gone tomorrow. Now, it's not that you are, but they don't know that. All right, y'all. Got any other questions? Any other thoughts? Okay. Well, check out the posts. Uh, and uh, that's it. You're welcome, Jeff. Good to see you. And I will see you guys soon. Let's fly.